actually a need to push even farther. Um, one of the things that you won't find reflected in this framework is the need to um, abide by the Hanoi Dec Declaration, which um, encourages member states to also develop animal influenza surveillance capacity. Um, the, um, we have a, a great problem, there's a great connection between uh, backyard farming as a uh, source of, of subsistence income and food in developing nations, but also as a source of uh, novel in influenza strains, mostly from poultry, uh, that then, uh, because of insecure um, farming practices and wet market practices, uh, end up being transmitted to uh, humans. The World Health Organization on their website right now is, um, has acknowledged that there was a death in Indonesia, the 145th death, I think, of avian flu, eight-year-old girl who developed it as a result of contact with the backyard chicken farm and uh, raw poultry that was brought home from a wet market in Jakarta. Um, that's not addressed here, and I think that's because uh, the World Health Organization recognizes that while this is an important priority, it's not as if it's not on the radar screen, having discovered in 2009 just how far behind we are in production capacity, just how far behind we are in terms of sur surveillance capacity of human influenza, we just have to push animal influenza and the risks it poses for human influenza off to sort of a second tier priority. Um, the last slide here is really about whose role. They were a successful mediator here. I think in part that's because H1N1 happened and wealthy nations recognized they needed to do more. Um, they are operating throughout this framework as the middleman. Um, give us the donations and we will, do, we will distribute them. And, uh, but I think the, the third one there is the one to keep your eye on. This was not in earlier drafts of the resolution. Pharmaceutical companies are gonna be paying 50% of the network's uh, by running costs, I'm interpreting that as operational costs, on into the future. And given the accusations that WHO was facing about close financial ties to pharmaceutical uh, companies uh, during the H1N1 pandemic, I'm wondering if this isn't just going to continue to raise eyebrows, and, um, and I think appropriately so. To what extent will pharmaceutical companies' interests be more represented in the, the ongoing execution of the framework within, the, within uh, the GISN, given the amount that they're underwriting? Thanks very much.